What's up, home dogs? It's your man, Big Dog here, live from number 10, Dizzle Stizzle. I'm very excited to uh, have joined the Tick Tock, which I'll be using to uh, uh, modernize our Hujima thingy and level up the Watsuma Call It. You won't uh, necessarily see me dancing on this website, Appy Thing, haha, <laughs> but you will see tons and tons of getting things done, a lot of leveling up, down, in, out, and shake it all about. You do the hokey cokey and you turn around and ultimately, isn't that what it's all about? There's been a lot of things going on in our great country this week. The Queen's Speech, which was all about great financial stress that the country is under. People unable to uh, afford to eat three meals a day and having to make difficult choices uh, between feeding their kids and, uh, and keeping them warm. All this was of course read by a multi-billionaire with a stupid gold hat. Elsewhere, the right smelly gentleman, Sir Beer Starmer, has been caught uh, being a boozy, curry-guzzling poo-face, as it turns out he had a completely planned, safety brief and lawful meal during the uh, work day. What a rotter! Ha <laughs> ha! How is it any different from me party-slamming two bottles of Lambrini and snorting coke of Michael Gove's cock? Anyway, TikTok, I have to go now. Appa uh, apparently, there are some refugees who need yelling at. Bye! Over on KGB News, Nigel Farage is interviewing two MPs about Keir Starmer's so-called beer gate. So, what you've got here is a classic case of absolute and total hypocrisy from the loony left. They say one thing, and oh, if you dare to question their mantra, thou shalt face the fires of the earth. And all the while, they're up to their eyes in it themselves. Sir Keir Starmer, leader of the Labour Party, has been howling for the Prime Minister's resignation for months now. In fact, he said little else. And it turns out, at the same time, he was hiding a little secret. You see, one night in April 2021, whilst on the campaign trail in Durham, Sir Keir stopped for 20 minutes to have dinner. What an absolute joke. I've got Conservative MP Tarquin Tittyfart here with me, and for balance, we've also got Corbynite Labour MP Diane Abbott. Tarquin, buddy, what do you think about all this? Well, obviously it's an absolute disgrace. The leader of the opposition should be ashamed of himself having dinner. I mean, people were dying all around this country, and Sir Keir let them down, stopping to eat food. You know who didn't get to eat food? Dead people, Nigel. Dead people. That's a good point, Tarquin. Very good point. Diane? I... But Tarquin, some people, morons, I might add, would say that stopping for a quick bite to eat and then getting straight back to work isn't as bad as having 12 parties at the centre of government. What would you say to those people? Well, I'd say take a long, hard look at the, in the mirror. Ask yourselves, could you truly have done better than our Prime Minister? I mean, if we're honest with ourselves, Nigel, it could have happened to anyone. Any one of us could have drank 300 sour shots, dry humped Matt Hancock up against the painting of Winston Churchill and passed out in Larry the Mouse's bed. Allegedly. Well, yes, of course. It's an easy mistake to make. Well, personally, I think that... I think it's fair to say that the whole idea of lockdown was a mistake anyway, and more fool anyone who actually followed the rules. I'd agree, Nigel. On the other hand, I think Keir Starman not following the rules is abhorrent, and he should resign immediately. During the COVID lockdown, People were separated from loved ones, unable to see friends, unable to see family, unable to hook up on Tinder for a quickie. And in all this time, we followed the rules. People were entitled to expect that politicians would follow the same rules as everyone else. Indeed, when my mother-in-law died just before the lockdown, my wife and I couldn't even comfort her grieving father. You know why, Boris? because I followed the rules. And these decisions were awful. People were miserable. We were miserable, but do you know what, Boris? We followed the rules. Yes, the rules were a disorganized bin fire that no one could understand, including the fuppers who wrote them. Hell, I had to isolate six times. Once because the cousin of a friend sniffed someone who might have had COVID, but we still followed the mother flipping piece of shit rules. So I think you'll agree. The idea that I would then casually break these same rules for the sake of a vindaloo and a bottle of Bex is wrong. I don't even think the crunts who are reporting this ship believe it themselves. They're just trying to get you to believe that all politicians are the same. Well, I'm here to say that we are not. I mean, look at us. I'm a smart, if somewhat slippery, sore pot 
He's a pissed up Wurzel Gummidge tribute act. I believe in honour. I believe in integrity and the principle that those who make the laws must follow them rather than get more fines than any other building in the country. I believe politicians who spit in the face of those things, spit in the face of democracy and spit in the face of Britain. Like many, I have been disgusted by the Prime Minister's refusal to take responsibility for the rampant law break in Downing Street, and I'm damned if I'll be seen to be doing the same thing. I am absolutely clear that I have broken no laws. I have followed the law at all times. I was simply having my fucking din-dins after a long day of listening to Angela Rayner talk northern at me, as Hello. any politician would do days before an election. But, if the police decide to issue me with a fixed penalty notice, I would of course do the right thing, Prime Minister, and step down. This matters. It matters because I want to show you that I have more integrity in my toenail than the entire Johnson family between them. I'm pretty sure Boris Johnson probably thinks honour and integrity are the names of two strippers he met on holiday in the Costa del Sol. You deserve politicians who put you first, and you will always, always get that from me. Well, what do you think of that, Tarquin? Well, I think obviously the leader of the opposition is attempting to play politics and pressure the police into dropping the charges. It's an outrage. Exactly! Hey, Michael. What? I need your help, Gove. Was it, my lord? Uh, they've got a fucking photo. A photo of what? I don't know how I let this happen. Of what? Uh, of a bloody party, Mike. Damn. I don't know what to do. Uh, say it wasn't you. All right. They've got a picky and they caught me red-handed standing by the press room door. Uh, picture this. I have a bolly in my hand and it's bottle number 34. How could I regret the night I party slapped a mojito? Now my party is in disarray. They're telling me I have to go. Right, settle down. Think things through. There's nobody sexier or wittier than you. You're a master of the spin, a political killer. Now you need a dead cat for newspaper filler. Another bloody sex pest all to do the trick. Or maybe we say Starmer sucking Corbin Trinkley dead. Hello. Find the right record and give it a play. And if they say resign, just say no way! But I drank all the bubbles. It wasn't me. I'm in a whole world of troubles. It wasn't me. I don't remember how it ends. Uh, uh, it wasn't me. It was a two-year bender. It wasn't me. And they caught it on camera. It wasn't me. Uh, there were 400 pictures. It wasn't me. My career is in stitches. It wasn't me. My God, is it all over? No, just say Sue it Gray came in and she caught me red-handed partying behind the black door. Sniffing coke off a civil servant's ass like a morbidly obese crack whore. I have tried to pressure her to block her report's release. She told me, go and fuck myself. That woman is a motherfucking beast. Will the Prime Minister tell the House whether there was a party in Downing Street on the 13th of November? Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, no, but I'm sure that in whatever happened, uh, the guidance was followed and the rules were followed at all times.